Okay guys, this is a follow-up video to the first video we did, and that was installing uh, a car head unit into the trailer here. And uh, it's worked great, and I'm very happy with how everything went. Now it's time to add a little more bass. Um, the stock system comes with four six and a half inch coaxial speakers. Uh, speakers have been upgraded, but you're still not gonna produce a lot of bass. Um, this is not for everybody, I understand, but if you want a little oomph to it, and it's adjustable too, that's actually the best part of this unit right here is that I can control the base from this head unit. I don't have to go over and keep adjusting it at the subwoofer. So uh, we're gonna go through the process of installing that. It's a little more um, involved and you're gonna have to find a place to put it. In my case, I'm, I think I got really lucky with the way that this is wired that I can pretty much put it in there pretty easily. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do. Okay, so getting perspective here is gonna be a little difficult and I apologize for that, but this is basically the dinette area of the trailer and this actually you know collapses here and becomes a bed and this is actually under this is the storage area the stow area for the trailer now what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to install it below the cushion here and we're going through the process of doing that and it's just going to pop out right at the end here the subwoofer we're using is a um, bazooka tube it's a 10 inch uh, self-powered tube, meaning that the amplifier is integrated actually into the subwoofer itself. The key here is that, and you're gonna wanna remember this if you add an amplifier, you wanna use a class D amplifier if possible. Uh, there's different classes, A, B, no one really uses C, and then there's D. Now, uh, D class amplifiers used to be very expensive, uh, and they didn't sound that great. They have since fixed that, circuitry's gotten better. A and B, or A, B uh, amplifiers, use a lot more power. Class D's are extremely power efficient. So if you're using it on your trailer, you probably want to use a Class D amplifier. So this is a 10 inch, has a, um, a 200 watt amplifier that's built into it, and it's gonna fit perfectly right under here. So we'll kind of start going through the process of what I'm gonna do here. Um, the one thing I am thinking about is whether or not I just want to take a chunk out of the front here, or if I want to try to make it look fancy and actually cut a perfect hole around there where that fits in, it just pops out, looks neater. It all depends on the difficulty of, uh, of doing the installation. So let me show you what's under here real quick. So this, the subwoofer is very light too, which is very nice. It probably weighs 20 pounds, if that. So if we move the, take the cushions out, your trailer may be the same, a lot of them are. Um, lift the cushion here. There's gonna be a piece of wood under here and all I have to do is just lift that up. And now I have access to this area. I just take my subwoofer, which it kind of, uh, if you buy this, um, it does come with a strap, uh, strap down kit too, which is awesome because that's going to make this even better when it gets in here. I'll hold it in place. And that's just going to sit in there like that. I'll cut a hole. And uh, this is an ultralight trailer. So. The boards that are fa facing boards are not uh, exactly thick. They're all pretty thin. So I can cut through this pretty easily. But basically what I'm gonna do first is get the fitting down. And the, what I'm gonna do is basically uh, get the strap kit installed. Make sure that it's measured up here. Then I'm actually gonna cut out the front here where the subwoofer is gonna pop out. And the best part is this on this one. You know, I've taken a lot of time with this and really thought about how I wanna do it. The rubber on the facing here actually comes off. And I'm going to take that off first before I do my measurements, then press it up against there and take a picture, uh, do it. So when it pops out, I'll be able to put the face back onto it and it, it'll cover up any kind of thing I miss here when I do the cutout. And it'll, it'll make more sense once I, uh, I do it. But that's what I'm going to do first um, by myself today. So. I'm gonna have to turn the camera off I'm doing this because it's gonna be a pain in the butt to work around the camera. We'll come back once I get the initial things done. Okay, so this is where it's gonna pop out. This is just a uh, facing here. It's not no thickness to it really at all. So I actually may go back and reinforce this after I'm done just so it doesn't rattle. But as you can see on the inside here, I'm putting two baseboards here for it to attach to since this is lifted right here and I can't just run it straight through. Having it lifted too would probably it's probably gonna be a good idea anyways. So there's the straps. So I'll take the straps and those go right on top of that. I'm debating whether or not 
I want to put some kind of insulation between this to isolate the vibration away from from that. But yeah, I'll think about it and see what I'm going to do. Okay, so I did go ahead and decide to go with a little bit of foam to isolate it a little bit. So this is just you know you can get this stuff at any hardware store, but it's just uh, foam you would put on a to insulate a door. But so it's like two dollars a roll, but that'll do a good job of isolating the vibration away from that. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and install the plates and uh, the strap now. Okay, so the straps are installed. Just two screws. And that, and we're good to go on both sides. I ain't going anywhere. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and do a test fit, see how that fits, and then I'm going to take the face off here. These are actually square screws, which are, you know you may need to get something for, but I have it. Take the face off, remove this bezel, and then I can lay it flat up against here. I'm going to draw in here what I need to cut out and then when I install it I will put this back on and then what that's going to do is make it fit and hook out this side just perfectly so at least that's what I hope it does <laughs> we'll see well, I was hoping I didn't have to take the whole front off but apparently I do so you know, I'll take all the screws out not just the ones that hold the grill on but the actual speaker as well which are underneath the grill okay There's only one way to put the wires on, so don't worry about getting remembering how they went on. So that's pretty standard subwoofer, nothing special. Vented pole piece, which is nice. Um, the big voice coil is a two-inch voice coil, which is pretty big for a uh, ten-inch sub. So that's off, and this whole assembly just should just slide off. See, just like that. So now I can trace out just the just the inside here, which I want, because then I want to put, when I install it, you'll see what I'm talking about once I put it back together. Um, there's a, some poly foam in here. Ooh. <laughs> That's actually more than I thought it was going to be. Check out that amplifier in there. That is fancy. Look at that huge heat sink on it. You don't usually see that. When they have the sub built in and the amplifier built in, it's usually this wussy looking thing inside, but... Man, that thing looks like it's ready to, it's built to play. So, I'm actually impressed with that. All right, let me put this phone back in here for now. And uh, I'll come back once we get a trace and start cutting holes. Once again, for perspective, you can see what I'm gonna do here. So now, see when I press it up against there now, I get a nice area where I can trace versus before you couldn't do that because of the face sticking out. And like I said, the grill area is going to make it larger, so I'll be able to slide this in, but it'll only go in one way. So if you don't want to steal it, it ain't going to be easy, which is also a good thing. Okay, so the hole's cut. You can see what's went around here. You know, a couple little spots. It's just dusty. I'll dust it off. You can see what my uh, envisionment is here and how that fits, and I like the way that it looks. You can strap it down, and you can go anywhere. And then I'm probably going to re I'll see how it sounds, but I'm probably going to have to reinforce this stuff because it's pretty uh, clumsy. Um, I used my uh, Roto Zip. You can use a Dremel or anything similar to do it, but it cut right through this like nothing, like butter. Uh, I wouldn't suggest a reciprocating saw just because of how tight the areas are. This thing is just, it's killer. It does, did a great job. So uh, I'll come back once I get a little farther along. Okay, so it's all installed. You can see how that looks. Can dress it up a little more if I wanted to and caulk around the ends to clean it up. But, uh, let's see, sorry, not like it in here, it's causing a problem. Two strap downs are installed. It feels like it moves a little bit. I think I can tighten it down a little more. And then that should do it. And that'll be the first part here, and that's in just the plenary installation. And then next, we'll do wiring. Now, again, gotta give you perspective where we at. we're at the trailer. Sorry, it's windy. We're in the front of the trailer here, so I can run. You don't want to run off any of the circuitry. You want to run straight to the battery for the um, positive. The negative, you're going to run probably down and into the frame and tied to the frame. But the positive should run. have a feasible link running to the battery, so we'll be working on that next. Okay, so I'm getting get my initial wiring hooked up. The only thing that's going to be running back to the head unit are the two RCA cables. You can go a two to one, but so I just go two to the head unit and then a uh, single wire for the trigger and that's going to turn the amplifier on and off. 
So I ran those over there and I wrapped them in black tape uh, to get that hole right. Hold on, let's get that right. Um, half inch hole right there and run it under the easement, which is this part. I taped it right here so that it holds it so when I go with the screws back in, it doesn't accidentally get it. And we're gonna run it up here. And then back to the radio. So uh, it shouldn't be too much longer and I'll have this all installed. Actually, I probably will run it um, right here up and then through the bottom here where the rest of the wiring goes. And I'll clean all this wiring up once I'm done with everything. And then I need to drill a hole, also a half inch hole, straight down against this edge right here, which it shouldn't be a problem. And then that'll pop off through the bottom. I'll ground the, uh, the negative side to the chassis and then run the positive through the front there. And that's the batteries on the other side there. Sorry, God, this, is, this camera's having problems. Okay, so the powers have run back to here. It has a fusible length. The fuse needs to be obviously be removed because you don't want it to do anything until it's connected. Everywhere where you use uh, butt connectors, you want to go ahead and just wrap it. Um, I'm going to eventually go and put a protective coat or coating over this. I just haven't done it yet. And it runs back through there. I'm going to have to get a grommet to go there. And we're going to go under the trailer in a second. Okay, that's where our wire popped out tracks back that way we'll put zip ties and tie it up and clean that up ground like I said you want to run straight to the frame if you want to take some sandpaper and set it down to the bare metal and then you can put the screw in it and that'll hold it in place so that's pretty much for this I just need to run the wires back to the head unit now and we can test okay so it's basically complete I ran the just a couple lines to this RCA line and also the remote line which runs the blue cable on the stereo which will kick it on when the radio turns on and they just feed back through the same hole the rest of these go through back down this way and then I just have them tacked on god the brightness on this thing sucks okay now you can see it comes back through here you can do this however you want this is the best way I've found to do it it pops out there track it back and everything hooks up right there. I'm going to fill obviously the holes with caulking and then um, protect the wires all the way back. I just haven't done that yet. Subwoofer's all installed. It works. I uh, can't play any music because YouTube will uh, say copyright infringement. So you're going to have to trust me that it works. But you see how that is. I can put it all back together. I can put the cover back on and it gives you a nice clean look. I also reinforced it. You're going to find when you work on your trailer that uh, some of the the workmanship isn't that great, but I added this board in here to bolster it up. It wasn't even attached right here, so I shot some nails into that as well. So this is all secure now. Doesn't rattle at all. Nothing rattles, which I'm really surprised by. I thought I'd at least get one rattle, but nothing. So that's what it looks like. It looks pretty damn good. I'm actually very, very impressed with how it sounds and the fact that I was able to squeeze it in there like that. It's an all-in-one unit. It's Class D amplifier, like I said, so it's super efficient. Um, I've been running the radio for about an hour, and my inverter hasn't even turned on yet. It's plugged in, so nothing's happened. So that's good. Anyways, uh, follow up with any questions, and I'll see if I can help you at all. Have a good day.